There's a wide world of whiskey out there and sometimes it can feel like there's too many to taste in one lifetime. Enter the Suntory Ao, a blend of whiskies from five different countries so you can taste a whole lot of styles in one glass. Let me tell you about it. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and like I said, this week I'm looking at the Suntory Ao. So let me get into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, as I said, this is a five part blend, and normally blended whiskies are made up of a number of different parts, sometimes five, sometimes seven, sometimes less. So what really makes this controversial? Well, it's about the countries this blend is sourced from. So it is actually sourced from a number of different countries. Now, you might have heard a couple of years ago, there was a lot of controversy around Japanese whiskey because a lot of Japanese whiskey, the blends especially, weren't actually Japanese whiskey, or at least weren't 100% Japanese whiskey. So because Japanese whiskey exploded in popularity, a lot of the distilleries didn't have mature stock on hand to keep up production. So they were importing whiskey from Scotland, from Ireland, from America, from Canada to make blended whiskey, to blend it with Japanese whiskey, to kind of make a Japanese whiskey that was made in Japan, but it wasn't actually originally made in Japan. And that's kind of where this whiskey comes in. This is called the Suntory Ao. Ao meaning blue, kind of a reminiscent of the oceans, saying it's an international whiskey, and that's what they call it, a world whiskey, because soon there's new rules coming in in Japanese whiskey production that say, if you want to call it Japanese whiskey, it has to have been matured, distilled, brewed, everything has to have been done in Japan, this is called a world whiskey, so it should be a kind of a allowable blend in the future, even though it does use whiskey that's not originally made in Japan. And keeping in with that worldly theme, this is actually an airport exclusive, so you can only get this when you're traveling through airports, and that's kind of appropriate because airports are where different cultures do meet, and so a lot of different whiskey culture is meeting in this bottle. And I do normally just focus on what's inside the bottle rather than looking at the bottle itself, but the bottle is pretty cool. So it is actually a square bottle, but they cut out this little notch here to make it into a kind of a, a not a pentagon, but it's a five kind of sided shape. Definitely does look cool. It does kind of stand out. It's a bit striking. I'm going to focus, of course, on what's inside the glass, but I just needed to say that it is a pretty cool looking bottle and I do appreciate it when manufacturers do put a bit of effort into their bottles. Now, what are the whiskies that actually go into this whiskey? Well, it's actually a five country blend, but it's a seven part blend. So there are two whiskies from Japan that go into this. We've got whiskey from the Yamazaki distillery and the Hakshu distillery. Yamazaki has this kind of floral sweet note to it, whereas Yamazaki, a bit more herbal, a bit more smoky coming through. From America, we've got Jim Beam, so it's gonna have a nice bit of oak, nice bit of caramel kind of bite coming through. From Ireland, we've got the Cooley distillery, so that's generally quite lighter, biscuity, vanilla, fruity, kind of apples and pears. From Canada, we've got the Alberta Distilling Company, and that's a rye whiskey they've contributed here, so it's quite a spicy kind of botanical note coming through. And then from Scotland, we've got two different distilleries. We've got the Ardmore, which is a kind of a smokier whiskey, and we've also got the Glengarock Distillery, which is again, gonna be a bit smoky, but more malty coming through than the Ardmore. So it should be a pretty complicated blend coming through, so I think it's enough talking that we go in for the nose. Cheers. Okay, this is actually an interesting enough nose. It's pretty complex. So right up front, you do get that bourbon note, that Jim Beam bourbon coming through. It's got this oaky note, caramel and vanilla, but then underneath that, just beneath that, you got this nice rich base of malt from that Scottish whiskey inclusion, from the Japanese whiskey inclusion. You got a really rich kind of malty base underneath it. And then you got this kind of vanilla, kind of sweetness rounding it out. It is a very complex blend. I wouldn't say it's very confused, like the flavors do almost match up quite well. It's almost if they were made to be blended like this, it is quite nice. It does seem to be blended quite well. There's nothing kind of completely out of whack on the nose. The more I sit with it, I'm getting more of those kind of apples and pears that you expect from a coolie distillate coming through because that does have quite a nice fruity vibe coming through. There's also a bit of a kind of a like a floral characteristic coming through, like a, almost like a perfume. Like it's not, um, it's not overpowering, it's not really strong, it's just there, as if there's a bit of perfume wafting in the air. In terms of citrus, I'm getting like a little bit of lemon, but again, it's 
paired in with that biscuitiness, with that maltiness, almost kind of like a, almost kind of like a, a lemon drizzle cake. So kind of nice, kind of multi-layered. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to kind of find in here as you go through the different flavor profiles that each of those whiskeys are contributing. So I think that's enough talking about the nose. Let's get it for the palate. Cheers. That's where the smokiness is. So on the nose, wasn't really getting any smokiness at all. It was much more sweet, much more floral, much more kind of fragrant. On the palate though, that's where the smokiness is. So right up front, you get this kind of bourbon sweetness. You get the oakiness from that bourbon. And then behind that, rounding it out, is a nice, rich bit of smoke. It's not overly powerful. It's not dominating the whiskey. It's more like a peaty hug around the other flavors in the whiskey. I can definitely tell into the finish, that's when the smoke continues to develop, but into the palate, you do get a nice bit of smokiness. You have some nice maltiness, again, with that kind of biscuity, kind of grainy malt coming through, a nice kind of rich, sweet flavor coming through. There was a nice bit of like sweetness as well, like um, not like a, not like a caramel, more like, a, like an icing sugar, quite nice and rich, but I think I'm gonna wait for another sip, see what else I can find, see what else is hiding within that smoke. Cheers. Now, they say that this does have some kind of tropical fruits coming through. I'm not sure I'm getting that. Maybe, maybe a little bit of pineapple coming through, like, but not as if you've just bitten a pineapple, like a, the pineapple flavoring like you'd get in like a sweet, like a, like a sugary sweet that has a kind of bit of pineapple flavor to it. I wouldn't say it's like biting into a pineapple. There is a nice bit of fruitiness in there though. The apples and the pears from the nose, that's paired back a little bit. It's not as strong as it was in the nose. It definitely does let that kind of smokiness kind of rise up to the top. The ABV on this whiskey is 43%. So it is a softer, kind of lighter ABV on this. It still does have though a nice kind of honeyed kind of texture. It is thick enough. It is kind of rich. It doesn't feel very thin. It does feel nice and rounded out and honeyed. So I'm going to go in for another sip. We'll talk with the finish. Cheers. Okay. So like many Japanese whiskeys, it does have quite a short drop off. After you take your final sip, it does have a drop off. A lot of the flavors do end pretty quickly. And that's, I think, a characteristic I find in a lot of Japanese whiskeys I've tasted. They have a lot of flavor in the nose, flavor in the palate, and then into the finish, it does drop off pretty quickly. So it's not the longest of finishes, but there is some notes that are hanging on low. So as I was saying, that smokiness does develop a bit more. The, um, the oak spice from the bourbon influence, that's definitely coming through. It's definitely hanging on a bit longer. The fruitiness, that's pretty much gone. The sweetness again is gone. It's almost gone not savory, but a little kind of herbal, a little bit botanical. Maybe that's the rye spice influence from the Alberta whiskey coming through into this whiskey at the end of the, t of, the, of the finish, just coming through, adding a little bit of extra dimension. But as I said, it's a pretty medium short finish with a couple of notes that do hang on a little bit longer. So is this an interesting whiskey? Yes, it is absolutely a very interesting whiskey. I mean, from A, the bottle looks really cool to B, moving into like the fact that it's um, just like an interesting international blend. Very uncommon to see this. Very interesting, very actually a nice whiskey. It's, there's nothing wrong with this whiskey. It's very nice. It's very enjoyable, but it is an airport exclusive. And the recommended retail price on this is I think $71, which is about 71 euro which is, I think, a little bit high for this. Now, airports do have sales quite often. We got this for like 55 euro on sale. So I think that's a much more reasonable price. I think if you see it, you see it on sale, definitely grab it. If you like the sound of it, definitely pick it up. I mean, it is an airport exclusive. You're not really gonna have a lot of opportunities to find it. I think it's very nice. I think it's definitely enjoyable. If it's something you wanna have on your shelf, maybe 71 is fine for you. A little bit high, as I said, I think for me, especially for a 43% whiskey, that is an international blend, but it's a very nice whiskey, and I think I'm gonna keep on enjoying it. I think if I can find it again at a price like that, I'll definitely pick up another bottle. But for now, I'm gonna keep on enjoying this. I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays, cocktail recipes on Fridays, and sometimes fun little videos on Mondays. So if you wanna see more, make sure you hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Sláinte.